Amen. How many were fasting and praying? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Amen. It's, um, you know, um, if there's something that... Um, <laughs> What a grand entrance. Just wait for everyone to sit down and start their business and just walk in. <laughs> Cheeky. Cheeky monkey. Oh. Nice. <clears throat> they complete us. Okay, guys, you can go to your Sunday school now. David, to Sunday school. Come on. You are late. If I wanted to play, you are late. <laughs> you want to preach with me? Ah, but I wanted, I wanted to take you, you refused. We'll chat later. No, but you did run away from me. <laughs> Character. <laughs> Oh. Can we just close the door behind, please? Thank you. You know, um, we took time to fast for three days. I took it all the week uh, for me, not for anything else. Um, you know, in, in our local Dalit, we have a saying. <clears throat> which simply means, or interpretation is that you need to hedge your house when it's dry before the rains come in, okay? So uh, uh, you, you, you look, if, if you dwell in a place which is prone to floods, or there's a chance that at one time water may overflow, you need to barricade your house, put the sandbags, before the season of rain, okay? And what we did over the course of three days, praying and fasting for your children, you were trying to hedge, and I pray that the Lord has hedged, amen? And also, if there are things that we are finding expression in praying and fasting, in you humbling yourself, you don't know the things that you have broken and the things that you have altered in the realm of, your, of the spirit concerning your children. Amen. You know, um, one thing I've come to discover is that in the Western culture, we, 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 we as parents, we, we, we build that bond with the children, which is not so much in an African setup, you know? Uh, but we, we cut up to our children's needs and in particular entertainment. You know, we give them anything that they want. You know, we can, we can take them. One of my friends was saying, you know, she bought a ticket uh, for Chesington for, for the whole year. You know, and that is to give entertainment to the children. There's nothing wrong with that. But I promise you, the time you spend sitting in the spirit for your children. It looks like nothing is happening, but in tomorrow, if only you knew that that prayer will sustain them in their work tomorrow. Some of us in this place are still victims of the actions of our grandfathers. Ah, you are quiet. <coughs> <laughs> you know when we make such statements people go like uh, but I'm born again <laughs> have you heard of Isaiah is it Isaiah 54 no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper have you read that scripture have you ever sat down to think of who God is speaking to? He's speaking to? To Israel, right? Is he speaking to them in Egypt? No. 
They are not in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. They are in the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. Or probably in captivity. But whatever, they, 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 he has delivered them from Pharaoh and brought them in the land that he promised. But he's still telling them that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. So meaning, the enemy still retains the ability to fashion a weapon against you yes. in as much as you are the Lord's. Uh, can I tell you something? The devil is alive. <laughs> the devil is still alive. He's not yet dead. And if, if, if only you knew and by the way, this is not the message I want to, pre to preach. I just want to encourage you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If only you knew. Uh, how many bake, bake cakes? I, I, and to bake, do you bake? You know, who, who, who likes bake? Oh, yeah, you bake, yeah? You, you can't bake without flour. No. Okay? You can't bake without flour. In the order of justice as established, the devil is relevant for the justice of God to be complete. <laughs> he is the accuser of the brethren. So he needs to do his job. He needs to fashion some weapons. And when he fashions his weapons, God also needs to do his job that you are his. And when the devil fashions his weapon, God arises and thwarts that and shows himself strong. And then you praise him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, look at someone that you need the devil. <laughs> sounds, sounds very wrong, eh? <laughs> He's a useful idiot. Sounds very wrong again, yeah. <laughs> I told you we are from the streets. We are not from Bible schools. He prepares a table in the presence of who? In the presence of who? So you need them, right? I like the way you're looking at me, all of you. <laughs> so you, 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 they, 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 they has to be an enemy so that God can begin to establish a table in his presence so that the enemy can see how hopeless and useless he is and you can see how powerful your God is. Amen. You know, my, my, my desire... Um, Let's go to the word. <laughs> let, let me preach. Today's word is titled spiritual growth. How, how to grow spiritually. Okay? And, and, and probably maybe this was a preamble. I didn't plan it that way. <laughs> okay? But, you know, as a young believer or growing up in, in the Lord, I, I loved and I was excited by preachers that excite men okay there is that excitement you know there are some preachers that just wants to they, they just speak things that when you listen you just just feel good and and i used to like that okay for a long time uh i listened to that and it there came a point where i discovered that i was excited but i wasn't growing Amen? Yes. I, I, I discovered that I was excited for a moment, but I wasn't maturing in the things of God. Mm. Yes. And I do apologize today, I will stand here like a monument because I, want to, I, don't, I don't want to lose my thoughts. I want to stick to what I've written and I pray God will help me. Mm. Yes. Amen? It's, 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 you, it's like you get, you feel good, you feel emotional, you know how sometimes when the man is preaching, you stand up, you know? But at the end of it all, there was no growth within me. And I, 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 I chose to 
begin to seek something different. Careful what I listen to. And I can promise you I've narrowed down very, very few men that I listen to that build my spirit. Be careful with excitement. Can I say that again? Yes. Be careful with motivational speaking and excitement. I believe that part of the grace upon my life is to bring revival, to awaken a people. Um, if, if we meet and begin to interact, you, you need to build me and I need to build you. Amen. 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 If, if we are fellowshipping together and three years down the line nothing is changing, then we are not helping each other. So it's possible for me to cater to your emotions and not cater to the truth of the spirit that helps you grow. And I have chosen deliberately to be different and bring a word that builds a people. Because a time will come in your tomorrow when you will be found in a situation and it is expected that you'd have grown enough to handle matters. Brother Rui, when you met your, your wife, there were no children. Okay? And I believe the things probably you loved and liked are not the same things you love and do and like today with the three children. Why? <laughs> Things have changed. There's the growth, the level of priority. So before the time, you could book a weekend and go to the beach and, and probably say, we're not going to come back and we will book a hotel and, you know, for the next two, three days because the, you, you, the hierarchy of needs is, is not that wide. But when you begin to grow, when you begin to mature, when you have one, two children, it, it's, it's right now, like in my cases, we are going, we, 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 there's a trip to Italy. Where, where did this come from? Oh, yeah, because it's a program at school. <laughs> okay. So, there the, are the things that begin to crop into your life. It's the same way spiritually that, you know, what you wear at salvation is not what you should be five years after being in the Lord. Hallelujah. The gospel we speak is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of the kingdom. Believe you me, it was established by the blood of the prophets, by the blood of the apostles and the saints, and ultimately by the blood of Jesus. This is not the word to excite men. Whereas it brings the joy of the Lord. But this is not the word to bring carnal excitement. This word is meant to bring life. To awaken a people and to build. So that at the end of it all, after all is said and done, by this time next year, we will be a bunch of warriors. Amen. Men that are able, you see, to travel and take a city. When your son is sick, Rui, when you call me to say, I want you to pray for me, you would have traveled in the night, you have got a scripture on that child, you have laid hands, anointed him, you have taken priesthood. By the time you are calling me, you have, you, you, you've done much. And then, uh, uh, Pastor, I just want to let you know that my son is not well. However, I have prayed and I have fasted and I believe God that he will be well. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to be in a place where the child temperature is high and, and, and every hell breaks, breaks loose. Ah. Growing. Amen. Being able to be stewards. And 
this morning, I, I just pray that the Lord will help us to see how we can grow spiritually. So, the gospel itself is not for exciting or emotions to a listener. It is meant to transform lives, to minister hope, and to quicken the believer. You know, at salvation, let me just, uh, I think I taught this before, and I just want to uh, tap on that. You know that man has a body, and he has a soul, and he has a spirit. Okay? So, at salvation, God restores your spirit. Are you with me? It does not touch your emotions. It does not change your body. Amen? Amen. If you give your life to the Lord today, if I give my life to the Lord today, Brother Darren, two minutes later, I still retain the ability to insult you in, after two minutes of giving my life to the Lord. <laughs> because that, that, that aspect is within the, is, 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 the, is the aspect of the soul. The Lord has restored my spirit, but the soul, if, if I am slim as I am, when I say, Lord, I receive you, you are my Lord, and I, I make all that confession, I will still remain slim. Nothing will change to my body. Because what God has done is he has restored the spirit component. Amen. Hallelujah. He awakens your spirit. Now, this is very important. The Lord awakens your spirit and brings an awareness to you concerning his love. Amen? Amen. Your spirit will now be strongly enlightened and heightened to the things that are of God and your sensitivity to the things that are sinful, the spirit now will become aware and more awakened. Are you with me? You, 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 you're looking at me like, what is he talking about? <laughs> you've, seen, you've seen the glove. You've seen the glove. Yeah. yeah? The glove is made in the image of a hand. Okay? Because the one who was making the glove, and I learned this from one of my mentors. Okay? I learned this from one of my mentors, and I, and I, want, to, I want to teach this to you. The one who made the glove knew that at one point or the other, a hand will come and fit into this glove. Okay? So, Brother Darren, your spirit man. Remember God is spirit? Remember God is spirit? So if God is going to interact with you, Brother Darren, he will not interact with you with your body. He will not interact with you with your soul. He will come to a component which is in his image, his, like, like him, the, the, the spirit man, and he will alight upon you and begin to try to see if he can be able to mold you and see if you'll be able to be obedient, working through the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the thing is, in all this arrangement, there is something that a man retains, the ability of choice and will. Hallelujah. We're talking about how to grow what? Spiritually. So, in as much as your spirit is restored, your soul still remains unchanged. <coughs> Hallelujah. Your body still remains unchanged. Now, your soul is where you find the will for all the choices you make, the emotion for all the tantrums we throw, 
and the intellect or the mind for all the cleverness we boast about. Okay, let's quote the scripture. You are, you are looking at me like, like, like. <laughs> uh, you, you understand? Yeah. 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 Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. I, I, I would like to have a church that is mature, that is grown in the things of God. That when we say, let us pray, you all burst up in voices because you understand what prayer means. Hallelujah. When you say let us sing, you raise your voices like, 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 like there is no tomorrow because you now have come to understand the matters of the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. Um, okay, so... Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. And this time, can I just check? Does it say, and you hath he quickened? In your Bibles? Yes. Yeah, just in case. Remember last time? <laughs> yes, so we are on the same page, right? Yes. Okay, Sister Shirley, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is, that is a powerful scripture. Yeah. That scripture is loaded. It's loaded. <laughs> uh, go sit at home and study it. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Can, 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 can you help me preach? Come on, people. It sounds like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Amen. Go and study that scripture and read it. Read it and ponder. You see, I was talking about the soul. The aspect of transformation is very, very important. <laughs> Hallelujah. The essence of transformation for you to grow spiritually is cardinal. Your soul has been shaped over many years by the wisdom of your parents. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your soul has been shaped by the wisdom of your education. Your soul has been shaped by the wisdom of the environment around you. Your soul has been shaped by the culture in which you have spent time. Your soul has been shaped by the civilization in which you have stumbled upon over time. Hallelujah. So transformation becomes key to your growth in the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The, the, the Bible says, you walked, it, it, verse, uh, verses, um, um, verses 2, of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 2. The Bible says, okay, let me, let me go back to verses 1. And you have he done what? Quickened. Who, remember what I was saying, that when the, when the Lord, when you on salvation, the Lord restores your soul and he quickens it, okay? So that you become aware of his love and also be alive to the sinful nature of this world. That, that, that is to arm you to be, to, to be conscious, okay? Because initially you, you, you were all dead. Remember Romans 3, uh, 23? For all have sinned. Huh? 
Okay? So, the Bible says, he hath quickened. Who, who were dead in trespasses and sin? Wherein, in time past, ye walked. <laughs> Hallelujah. That word, you walked, is a way of life. That word, you walked. Okay? It, your, your way of life before. Okay? Your perspective of things before. Your lifestyle. Your conduct. Your hopes and aspirations. Your, your perspective to life. Your ambitions, the drives. Let me just say the sum total of your entire life. You walked according according to the what? According to your sinful nature, according to the course of this world. Hallelujah. It's a gradual process and it's something that you have to make a deliberate choice. Because I don't want to go ahead of myself. <laughs> but Darren, yeah. before time, I, I, like, I like preaching with, with Darren. He's a, he's a victim of circumstances. <laughs> before, you walked in the ways. I walked in the ways. You know? So if I wake up at 1 a.m. and a friend says, ah, I'm at the pub. And they're like, hey man, it's happening. I've got money. There's nothing to restrain me. I get up, put on my trousers. Mm -hmm. And by the time I wake up, it's six in the, I come back home, it's six in the morning, wasted. I walked. I walked according to the course of this world. Don't, don't, don't lose it. We're talking about how to grow where? In the spirit. In the spirit. Are you with me? Now, the Bible says, there are things that influenced your, your decisions. There are things that influenced your choices. In the same verse, the course, you know, the course is like, you know, like, like a path? You know, like a golf course? A golf course? You know how it's laid? Okay? So the course, that is a path of the world. And that, 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 that path, that route that you were walking, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize this aspect because some of us are still victims of that course. We have, we have come into God, but we are still on that path. We are our course is still, the Bible says, I, 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 let, let, let me read it before I make this. Wherein in the past, in the time past, you walked according to the course of the world. So, meaning the world was the, the, the datum. Okay? The world was the master. The world was the, the guide, the, 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 the north star that guided your being and your abilities. Okay? And, and the Bible says, according to the princes of the power of the air, number one, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So, your, your, your walk... Your walk was influenced by demons. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so you, the, 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 there's a strong influence. So you see men uh, 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 doing the things that you look upon and you go like, why is he in love with another man? Ah. <laughs> uh. Why is she in love with another woman? He walked according to the course of what? Of this world. The wisdom, the peace of the air. Those are demonic powers. Where are the, where, where are the light that shone your way? That's why you could go to the wrong places. That's why you could do the things without a conscious. Because the influence of the power of the air, demonic powers, were ruling your life. Now it's unfortunate and it's sad that you'll be five years in the Lord, still walking on that course, still being direct, your, 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 your lifestyle, your pathway is still ordered and influenced by the princes of the air, 
and by demonic forces. I assure you, you will never see the true manifestation of God if you continue on that path. Do you know what, what is in there? Frustration. Because God is a God of order. And what God wants is total surrender. That's why transformation is key. Transformation. Like your soul has, has, has been countered by... I, I don't, it's, you know where I come from? I've never seen my dad. But my dad, I think... My, my mom was, was a side chick. Side chick. It's, it's, a, it's a language that we speak today. Don't look at it as if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Come on, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. She was a girlfriend. Bit you understand? A bit on the side. Yeah, be on the side. A bit of, uh, yeah, that's, that's the language. A bit on the side. That was my mother. The man had three wives and my mother on the side. Some Solomon in the making, you know? <laughs> and by culture, it is all right. You understand? By culture, it is all right. And if my mom so wished, she would have become a fourth wife. <laughs> and if I'm brought in that environment, I will begin to justify that it is okay. I can marry another wife because I have married. It's legal. Hey, you understand? I can make a third one. It's legal. And the government will support me because in my country, you can be polygamous. It is fine. The culture has shaped my mind. But when I come into Christ, I begin to understand that Christ and the church is a marriage relationship. And when I come into Christ, we have become one body. And anything else is adultery. So my mind needs to be transformed to figure out that actually the, the, the dictates, the thing that determines my course and my path is not no longer influenced by demonic powers, but by the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you will forever remain infants, even after attending church for 10 years, but you have still been your, 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 your feet. Listen, the Bible says the steps of the righteous man are ordered of the Lord. You do not have capacity to order your path. If you order your path, it is influenced by the prince of the air. Go and read that. Go, go and read. Go sit down and read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. In fact, read the book of Ephesians. <laughs> I, I, you see, the problem is I, I enjoyed the exciting messages when I was young. You know, we, we used to claim anointings when, when T.D. Jakes is preaching. You know, he's preaching at his own fire. Yeah. You know how he preaches? Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, Father, I want to, I, I pray for the anointing, like T.D. Jakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> jokers. All right, jokers. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. Hallelujah. We called for a fast for three days. I went almost six to seven days. Is it because... I just want to starve myself. There's a price to pay. If I told you I've prayed for my grandchildren, I established that they will, they will flourish. I prayed for the man that will marry my daughter. I prayed for the woman. I blessed the womb of a woman who will be the wife to my son. I blessed their children. Children, I, 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 I traveled for their wealth and their establishment, that the world will receive them, that kings will serve them. You don't just become. Some of you are victims today of what your grandfathers did. Yet Christ died on the cross. Until you surrender. Until you relinquish. Until you let go. Religion has to die. Church, 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 that church that you are used to has to die. You need to come into the spirit. Because he who, worship, who you worship is a spirit. Transformation. Someone say transformation. transformation. Transformation is critical. You want to grow in the spirit? You want to grow in the spirit? You need to be transformed. You see, I, 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 I use this statement, and I know it's so biblical. God is not a cheap skirt. You understand? 
Moses tried to deliver the children of Israel as a young man. And God says, I don't do things like that. And Moses went, and, and the children of Israel were still in captivity. Forty more years. Then God says, I think now uh, you may have been schooled in the things of priesthood with, the, with that uh, king of Medina, or the priest of Medina. Probably maybe has oriented you in the matters. So now maybe I can bring you back. He was 40. The next time God began to go and begin to deal with him, he was 80. God forbid that you miss the time of God. By the time he wants to call you, you are dead. Or probably you are so old that you cannot do that which he desired you to do. Grow. Grow. Desire. Desire to grow. Let go of the things of this world. He's, he's, he's a, he, he is a holy God. Let's make progress. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the hope, the hope of God. You see, we, uh, Barry, let's, let's, let's preach. You see, when God called you, his hope, his hope was that you will live for him. Are you with me? Brother Dan, the, the hope of God is that you, you will live for him. And, 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 and what he did was, even when you didn't even know it, even when you didn't even want, he called you. Romans 8, Sister Shelley. Romans 8, 29. Listen, listen, listen to this. Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 8, verses 29. Can you just conf confirm it? It says, for whom he did know, if or no. Yeah? <laughs> okay? It's so trying to confirm scripture. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are we in Romans chapter 8? Verse 29. Listen, listen, listen. The hope of the Lord. Uh, uh, brother, I mean, Sister Shelley. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. You understand? The, 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 the hope of God. You remember the prayer of David that he would say, you saw my unformed body, you needed my, my bones, you needed my mother's womb. Before time, Brother Darren, you know, I love spiritual things. You know, God in his wisdom, in his hope, he predestined you. And his hope is that you will be conformed to the image of his dear son. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the hope. For whom he did for no, so you are not an accident. Eh, eh, de, de. <laughs> you see, my, my, my dad looked at my, my mom and, as a beautiful woman, and oh, and I became, I, was, I wasn't an accident. <laughs> he foreknew me. Yeah. <laughs> ah, hey, why are you depressed? <laughs> hey, I've never seen my dad. Oh, when I was young, I was forsaken. Oh, no, I grew up badly. You are a Christian. Five years in the Lord. And you lack understanding. For whom he did for no, he also did what? Did what? Predestinate to be what? To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn. So the Christ, so your, before your course was ordered by demons and you were conforming to the world. Hallelujah. And unfortunately that you are still in the Lord and in some ways and shapes and form, you're still walking in conformity with the world. But that's not what God had intended. His hope is that you will be transformed in the image of his son. You know, a foot cannot fit in the hand glove. You understand? In as much as there are five toes on the foot, it won't fit on the hand glove. 
You can never be compatible with the world at the same time be compatible with the spirit. No, it can't. It, 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 it shall never. You will be in the church warming pills. Jesus will come and you'll be left behind. You want, you want me to tell you the things you want to hear? You want me to speak to your emotions? <laughs> God forbid. God forbid. The hope is that you'll be what? You'll be transformed. How? How, how, how do you get transformed? Brother Darren. How, how do you get transformed? Ah, she's got it. Second Corinthians chapter 3. You see, sometimes we preach the gospel and not give answers and give, not give solutions. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses 18. <laughs> Amen. Because the hope is the Father that you'll be changed. So when you come into the Lord, you need to leave your past. You need to be transformed. You see, there are so many, unfortunately, there are so many people that are filling the pews and the church, but their lifestyle is different from the template of God. They are not closer to the image of the Father, of the Son. Very far. Very far. But we sing hymns in church. We, we talk the language of the church. God bless you. Ah, brother, brother, you're, brother Ru, you're looking good. God bless you. Ah, bless you, bless you. It is well. Breakthrough. We talk the language of the church, but we are our lifestyle are contrary to the spirit. I saw I saw a picture. Uh, the, I saw the picture. You know, it was very hot on Sunday. Um, one of one of the person put a picture of a Catholic father. You know, he's in um, in his legalia. You know all that, and this, the Bible is in his armpits. And uh, I think he must have been an Irish Catholic Catholic father. That one. His, 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 his Bible is in his armpit and he's grabbing, you know, with a big glass of, of beer, you know, <laughs> quenching down the cold. That was a caption. <laughs> Everything is permissible. You understand? Everything is what? Permissible. But not everything is beneficial. You want to work with God? Sister Shelley. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses 18. Hallelujah. But we all, with open face beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Do, do, do you read this Bible? Yeah. <laughs> You know, every time I read the word, I go like, what? You know, sometime, a long time ago, I used to read the Bible in the third person. I read it for me. And thank God that the Lord has given me a grace to minister. I read it for me, but also I, I, I feel like I've got a duty to minister to the people of God. To bring an understanding and to awaken, to bring revival. Amen. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass. The word beholding is like seeing, like looking. Amen? Like in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Remember uh, Romans 8.29? The idea that you be conformed to the image of his dear son? Okay? So now, the Bible is saying here, but as we behold, as we keep looking, what, what are you beholding? The word of God. The word of God becomes the guide. The, if it is in the word, obey. If it's not in the word, do not. You understand? We have followed the ways of men and left the word of God. As you behold, as in the glass, the word of God, if he says, thou shalt not kill, do not kill. As you walk in that obedience of not killing, you are conformed to him because he is love. Amen. <laughs> you understand? If he says forgive, you do not carry a grudge for three years because someone did you wrong. No, you forgive because he is a God of love. So you are, you are being conformed. That is the image of his dear son. But you know what the problem is? You know, as a young man, Brother Darren, I loved Tupac. <laughs> do, 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 do you remember a guy? Pauline may not understand. I know she's looking at me like... 
there's a guy, a rapper, a, a musician, Tupac. You know, Tupac, you know, he used to wear his trousers somewhere below his bum like this, you know? And he'd tie a bandana, you know, around his head. And, and I, I like that guy, you know? And he would, you know, when he's rapping, it's like, oh my goodness. He, he, he did one song, Dear Mama. I love that song. And before, the guy was in America, Sister, Sister Pauline. In America, I had never met the guy. But if you met me in the streets, if you've never seen Tupac, or if you've seen him and you come and see me, you will say, this guy looks like Tupac. <laughs> I had conformed to Tupac, a man I had never met. Why? Because I was beholding his ways. Yeah. What are you beholding? What are you beholding? That which you are beholding, it is conforming you into its image. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> ah, I love the gospel. Church, we can't be infants forever. We need to grow. We need to grow. And this is key. You behold the word. You see Jesus is escaping his brothers and disappear to a mountain from midnight all the way into the morning. He is praying. And you, 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 you don't want to pray. And you want to... That is the image. Ah. <laughs> you understand? You want, you want to go spiritually? Come on, talk to me, people. <laughs> huh? Do you want to go spiritually? Yeah, he did leave his friends and spend the night in the mountain. In case they didn't tell you. Hours praying. You, you, you want to go in the things of the spirit? Yes, he fasted 40 days. <laughs> Three days, you can't. One day, you can't. He, 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 this is the pattern. Unless, uh, probably you want Beyonce to be your pattern. There's that uh, young woman. Uh, Natalie, where's Natalie? Uh, Beyonce. Uh, or Kardashians. Uh, they, uh, they, can, they can be our image. And before you know it, will be conformed in them. You understand? So when you read the word, be holding as if in the glass. Amen. Amen. Do you know people that become... Like, like, like politicians, you know, they'll begin to study Obama. You know, they'll begin to study Churchill. Because they want to, they want to become like them. Yeah. Your template child of God is Jesus. Yeah. And the only way you know who Jesus is, you will find him in, the, in, the, in Genesis. You will find him in Exodus. You will find him in Psalms. You will find, he's littered all over the Bible. So he is your image. And the more you behold the word, you begin to be conformed. It's a gradual process, but you choose to yield to his will. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We'll be concluding. Don't worry. Galatians 5, 16 to 17. Uh, we're talking about growing in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Growing in the spirit, you know it's it's it's, it's very you, you know. Uh, coming to the UK, I've seen how people love studying. The UK is a place of knowledge. You know, if there's something that the United Kingdom is known of, is administration. Okay, so most people come here, and if they have got a degree, before you know it, the next thing they are pushing for for a masters, because they want to, you know. They, they, they want that, that position. And next they get the master, they begin to push for a doctorate because they want to mingle with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if your pursuit is perpetually in, in keeping with the things of this world, ah, it won't be too long before you get disappointed. But if your pursuit is in keeping with the things of the spirit, you will never be disappointed. Even when things fall apart, when you hit a valley, the Spirit of the Lord begins to raise the standard. Amen. When you are fighting a battle on the mountain, he is God of the mountain and he is God of the valleys. He, 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 you know, the, you, you can have a PhD and be learned and all it takes is coronavirus and it will mess up all your career. But if you know God, in the midst of coronavirus, you will never lack, you will even give to many. 
Do you want something to pursue? Please pursue. Grow in the things of the spirit. The fingers, the fingers, the fingers, the fingers. Good boy. Good boy. Are we in Ephesians? Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Just as well, I mentioned it before time. Galatians 5, 16, 17. Sister Shelley, please help us. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Now that's a problem. Remember what I was telling you initially, when we began? You are a body that has a soul and has a spirit. You're not, you're, 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 by the way, let me just clarify, you are not a spirit. Okay. The Bible says, for there is a spirit in man. <laughs> are you with me? Okay. So what, 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 what the, the, the aspect that gives you a, a, a spiritual component, you being a spiritual, a spirit being, is a spirit in man. But you're not a spirit. You will have a body. Now, here is a problem. God is saying, according to the word, as revealed unto Paul, I say, this I say then, walk in the spirit. That ye shall not do what? Fulfill the lust over your flesh. Now, your flesh is at war with you. <laughs> the flesh uh, you, you know, brother, yeah, I, I preach, don't worry, don't, don't mind us, you are preaching, brother, brother Darren. You know, you know the sneaker you are wearing, eh? Uh -huh. uh, okay, I'll not, I'll, not, I'll not ask you how it came. But you know, you've seen, you, you've, you've gone to a place where, you know, you're watching TV, and then you see a sneaker, a beautiful one, a Nike, and then you go like, I want that, but you don't have money. But you've got a credit card, and it's almost maxed, but there is enough to buy the sneaker. Ah. Yeah, yeah. My flesh is tempted. The flesh, your, 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 your spirit man will give you wisdom. Listen, last one. The credit card is only remaining, is worth 1,700, but you've spent 1,500. Yes, the sneaker is 100 quid, but it will increase. It, you can let it pass, but the flesh will be saying, it will look nice on my foot. <laughs> Do you understand? The flesh is, you, 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 are, you are thirsty, it's hot. And instead of the water, no more water, the, 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 the flesh is lasting for something else. Coca-Cola. Yeah, probably Coca-Cola, that's fair. You understand? The flesh is constantly where? At war with the spirit. But the Bible, the counsel of the word is at what? Walk. Walk. This I say, then walk in the spirit. Remember, as you behold, remember, as you behold, you are what? Conformed to the image. Understand? So the, the, uh, your behold, what you are beholding now is this counsel which says walk in the spirit. And it, it calls sacrifice, brother Darren. It calls to deny yourself. When you hear Paul, he says, I, I, I crucify my body. In other, in, in other, I think it should be Romans where it says, mortify your body. Do you know what it means to, to mortify? Come on, mortify. Mm -hmm. To kill. Mm -hmm. kill. Kill the body. In other words, subdue, step on it. It will try by all means to arise. Step on it. Live by the Spirit. Amen. The scripture we began with, it says, before you walked according to the course, of men, which was influenced by the princes of the air, which are demons and powers, the princes of this world. You understand? But now here the Lord is saying, walk according to what? To the spirit. Am I, am I, am I, am I helping someone? Yes. Do, do, do you want to cast out the devils from your children? Yes. <laughs> do you want to, to pray until that son who has gone astray comes back to the Lord? Yes. This, this, this is the way. This is the way. When you, you see, God is looking for sons, not toddlers. 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> exactly. He created them, male and female. He created them both. Yeah? Let us make man. And God created them male and female. So when I say he's looking for sons, you understand? Yeah. Okay? Don't be confused by this confusion of this world, this rubbish uh, uh, sons. <laughs> you understand? And the essence is that these sons should be what? Co-heirs. So if, 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 if God wants to bless uh, my brother here, you have enriched me with the word so much, when I speak to him, his life is transformed. You understand? It, it, it's, it, I, I, you, you're giving me poker faces. <laughs> I always mean. For the flesh lasteth against the spirit. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, a, a, okay, now I'll, I'll not use this example. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, I won't, I won't, I, 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 I take back. Let me think about something else, you know. Um, and the word last is strong. You understand? Last is not just for immorality, no. You can last after things, yeah. okay? So the body, when you want to wake up and pray in the morning, the body will say you are tired. Yeah. And you'll be tired, genuinely, you are tired. You understand? But you need to tell your body, I know you are tired, but if I go to bed and lie in my bed and pick up my, book, my, my, my phone and open Facebook, next time I realize it will be 2 a.m. You, you, you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? In reality, the thought that came to your soul is that you're what? Tired. So you didn't pray, you go to bed, you lay on your bed, you, okay, before I sleep, let me just see what people have done, and you open your phone, and next you discover an hour 30 has gone. You, you, what, you, what, what I want you to know is that your body was kicking off against the spirit. Because prayer is of the spirit. You want to read the book which is the Bible, you open the page, after the, three, the, the first chapter, you are, you, are, you are nodding. Ah, I'm tired. You put it down. You go and open YouTube and you watch the next three hours. It is at war. And the area you understand, the area you understand, you will remain a toddler. Going to church, there's nothing wrong. You'll be attending meetings, there's nothing wrong. But you will not be able to prosecute the matters of the spirit as a priest and as a son who is supposed to be a choir in God. You know, all of you are saved in here. I was talking about the book of Ezra, as I conclude. The children of Israel were in captivity 70 years. At about 45 years of in captivity, or 45 or 50, plus minus, King Cyrus conquered Babylon. Okay? And you see, the Babylonians, their mode of operation was that when they conquer a city, they capture all of them and bring them in Babylon. Okay? But the Persians, the idea is like the way the United Kingdom did their colonialization. If they conquer a city or a nation, they don't carry them. They leave them to function as they are, but they will rule over them. You understand? So when Cyrus came, the Lord granted him grace. Okay? And he released the children of Israel. And the first batch that went to Israel to begin to rebuild the altar, the first thing they did was to rebuild the what? The altar. After rebuilding the altar, they began to build around. But the Bible records that they did not finish the work even after being away from, after being released to go into Judah, they still were trying to build 15 years down the line. You understand? Ezra came. And when Ezra was, Ezra was uh, the second batch. So the first batch of the remnant went, about 20,000 with, um, with um, uh, Zerubbabel. Okay? The second batch was with Ezra. And the last batch was with, with, with Nehemiah. Okay? So now, when Ezra came, Ezra was a, was a priest and a scribe, okay? And then he discovers that actually they have been set away from captivity, they have gone into the promised land, but number one, they have not built according to God. 
That's why you see Nehemiah still coming to build the walls and fighting and the shield, and it's, it's because of that. You understand? But not only that, they had taken wives from the men and women they found in the land. <laughs> you understand? So you are saved. And 10 years in the Lord, you are still conforming to the things of this world. Until a preacher comes and ministers to you and says, you cannot continue walking like this if you want to remain a child of God. You understand? So when Ezra came, he says, look, this is an abomination. And Ezra began weeping. And he said, we will elect the, we will the, the scripture we read in the morning, remember Ezra 3, uh, 11, where they broke the altar and began to celebrate. But if you go down, he says, we cannot continue like this. You can't continue walking in the ways of the world and at the same time you want to be a child of God. You can't. So Ezra reminds them to say, you have taken wives. And listen to me. The priests, the priests had also taken women from outside. The priests, the sinners had taken women. So just because you are in church is not guarantee. You understand? There are many men who have compromised. There are many believers who have compromised. May that not be your story. But to bring restoration, it is key to repent. You understand? After you heard this word, if, you, if this word has ministered to you and you really want to grow in the things of God, you need to begin to repent and walk in the spirit. Walk away from the things of this world and walk in the way of the spirit so that you can grow. Because they could not begin to build further. And Ezra said, Everyone who has a wife or a daughter given in marriage or taken in marriage, you have to give them up. Yeah. You're saying, yeah. Do you know how painful that is? Do you, know, do you, you, don't, you don't understand? Uncle Bet, these guys are children. And he says, doesn't matter, even if a child is two years or suckling, leave the woman and leave the children. Uh, uh, sister, sister, uh, go to Ezra, Ezra 10, uh, 40. I, 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 I want to, 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 to conclude this with this statement. You understand? The, the, you, you cannot progress whilst you want, you can't hold, you can't live both lives. You can't. You want to go for the things of, grow in the things of the spirit? You need to leave the world and be abide in God. So as you, you, whatever you are holding on to, it may sound good, it may look religious, but if it's not spiritual, cut it off. That you may see growth and become a son whom God can entrust. God is looking for gatekeepers. Yeah. You understand? The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence. So who, are you ready to take a position and fight for the kingdom of God? Amen. If you are going to be victorious in your fight, for the things of God, you need to be right with God. Otherwise, you'll be a victim of circumstances. Ezra 10, verses 40. The last portion, I think. 4-0. Four, zero, four zero. Ezra 10, verses 40. You, you, you need to let go. You need to let go. You cannot continue to compromise. You are, yes, you know, they were delivered from captivity. Just like you and myself. The Lord set us free. He redeemed us by the blood through his son. Brought us in his kingdom. But 10 years down the line, we have not built something in the image of God. We have compromised. You understand? Especially Ezra 10 verses 40. That's just nice. uh, no, the last part. The last. Do 43. Uh, for, uh, for, for, um, okay, let's do 43 and 44. Yeah. Just the last portion. The, or, or just do 43, just do 43. Because the names, the, the names um, I know the names are very interesting. So just do 43. 44. 44. 44. Just do 44. Do 44. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. You understand? Do, do you understand? The price of compromise. The price of compromise. And Ezra as a priest could not allow. You cannot begin to build on this broken foundation. 
Yes, you have been free. Yes, you are in your land. Yes, you are the children of God, but you have compromised. And if you want to ascend in tomorrow, let go. The let, can you imagine a child, is, you, you have had a relationship with him for 15 years. <laughs> I, ask me, I don't know what you have been holding on to. If you want to grow spiritually, here is the counsel of the Lord. Let go. I ask me, let go. Circumcise your heart. Mortify your flesh. It's something that you need to take a deliberate choice to walk in. It's not easy. But if we are going to be established as a church by tomorrow, that is able to cancel prostitutes when they come here. That is able to cancel drunkards when they come here. We ourselves need to have grown. You understand? We ourselves need to be established in the things of God. It's, it will be hard for you to give counsel to a man who is carnal when you yourself you are carnal. You understand? So until you leave carnality, then you can be a blessing to a brother when he comes. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will grant you grace as you sojourn, as you walk this course, the path of life, in the things of the Spirit, that you will mature and you will yearn to grow in the things of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom, shalom.